how do you get the DB9 onto your Aston Martin? In this episode of Aston1936.com, I'm going to show you how to install the DB9 uh, logo letters uh, onto the boot lid of your uh, Aston Martin DB9. So for me, this was kind of a funny story. My car uh, got damaged and it was sent to an Aston Martin paint shop to uh, get resprayed. It came back. I was thrilled. And then I got a phone call from the paint shop that went, uh, we've made a mistake. We forgot to install your trunk uh, DB9 logo. And I came out and I took a look and lo and behold, it wasn't, it wasn't there. So uh, the shop is a couple of hours from my house. I'm in Northern California. There aren't Aston Martin certified paint shops everywhere. So they said they'd FedEx them to me, which they did. And then I asked them, okay, do they come with a template to install them? And they went, nope. And I'm like, well, it's three separate things. And they're like, yep, you just stick them on. And I went, well, how do you know where to stick them? And their answer was, we just wing it. So um, you know how that goes for me. I'm always, uh, you know, Mr. Just uh, artsy crafty wing it guy, not. But I'm going to show you how to get these installed today. And uh, let's get started. So we're going to need a couple of uh, uh, things basically to help lay out where the uh, DB9 logo goes. Uh, one of the things I'm going to use is some blue uh, painter's tape uh, to put some reference lines on the, the trunk when I'm working on it. I've got a, a plastic, so it won't scratch, flexible, so it can bend a little bit, metric ruler. Um, so all, all my uh, calibrations in millimeters. So um, I'm going to use that. Um, also got uh, a vernier caliper that can do um, millimeters and that's going to actually even be even easier than using a plastic ruler. So if you have one of these, I would use this over a plastic ruler and a pencil uh, that you can make some tick marks and a microfiber towel uh, that you would use to uh, kind of make sure the, uh, the trunk deck is nice and clean uh, when you get started. Parts is pretty simple. You're just going to need your uh, new DB9 logos and uh, they'll come in little safe, nice bubble wrap bags and they're, um, they're adhesive. Um, almost all automotive manufacturers now put their logos on with uh, stickers uh, rather than uh, bolting them on. So um, the backs of each of these have just basically got some peel and stick on them. And uh, brings up a good topic. You could stick them on any way that you wanted. And I was like, okay, where's the template that should go with this in the box? I was figuring they'd be on some sort of front panel thing that you move over and stick onto the car together. Well, they aren't, which came, uh, caused a real dilemma because I called the uh, Aston Martin certified body shop and asked them how they um, apply them. And they went, we just wing it. Uh, well, you know me, that doesn't really work all that well. So what I did, so I went on to the Facebook forums and I asked people to take pictures of their uh, DB9 logos on their cars and if they would hold a ruler out. And so a bunch of guys did, which was really terrific. And I thank you if you're one of those guys. And I had an old photo of my car. And essentially I took all of this information I got from other people and I've created this template. This will be available on the companion blog over at Aston1936.com. Basically, it shows that we're going to use the top as a, a datum line, and that datum line is going to be 41 millimeters from the bottom of the, the trunk lid. Um, and that we're going to, and I've got references from uh, the right hand edge. So, and then we'll just scoot the letters hopefully into those positions and tack them down. Uh, so, I'll have this when we're installing it on the car. Let's head on over and give it a try. So let's get started uh, uh, laying out the uh, where they go on the boot lid. So I've got my template here and uh, step one, put on my glasses. Step two is we need to get our bottom reference line and we can stay in pretty close for this. What I found is it's really hard on a curved corner 
to know where you're going to measure up from. So I'm just literally throwing a piece of tape um, on that bottom edge uh, so that I can have uh, something I can write on. And right out on the outer edges, I'm just gonna, where I see the shadow line begin, I'm just gonna make myself a mark. And that's gonna do the trick for me for now. So the next thing I'm gonna do is grab another piece of painter's tape and then straight up, right beside my mark, straight up as I can be, I'm just gonna kinda eyeball that. And then the right hand side one, I'm just gonna cut in front of the camera here. I'm gonna put the edge of the um, tape following the, the line. So it's not going straight, straight up, but this will help me later. Otherwise it starts to throw me off visually. And uh, I'm gonna re mark that bottom dado, datum. All right, so next, I wanna measure up 41 millimeters. So uh, you could use the plastic ruler, but I've got my uh, calipers here set to 41. And the old adage, measure with micrometer, mark with chalk, cut with ax, is probably appropriate here. So this is gonna allow me now to use another piece of tape to connect those two dots. To get myself a nice line 41 millimeters up from the bottom edge. And I can spot check that maybe in the middle, just eyeballing it, yeah. That looks really good. So now I have a line across the top that it's my reference line. So going back and looking at my diagram, the back edge of my DB9 is going to be 26 millimeters from the right edge. So I'm gonna also give myself a, a reference line there. And then 26. My next one for the leading edge of the B is at 92. So setting my calipers for 92. Close enough. And the beginning edge of the one, uh, the D is at 122. Close enough. All right, so that's the 26, that's the 92, and that's the 122. What the idea will be is after I peel the adhesive is that I'll set the D and I'm just gonna get the top. The only thing that was constant seemed to be that the top's lined up. So I'll get that corner of the D lined up with the 122. I'll peel and stick the B next and get the uh, top lined up and stick it at the 92. And then the only part of the nine that had a good reference was this back edge. And so it'll be a couple of millimeters in from the edge of this tape. It should, if there was a, a matching line there, it'll be like that. So that's my plan. Let's see if I can make it work. All right, so now it's the moment of truth. I'm actually gonna stick them on. So uh, let's get kind of one shot at this, I guess. Hopefully I don't screw up. So I'm just peeling the backing off on the D. My fingers are nice and clean, by the way. And this is also a good time for maybe to me to point out, if your car has been waxed, uh, you're going to probably want to, uh, before you put the tape and everything on here, you're going to want to wipe this down with isopropyl alcohol or dilution of isopropyl alcohol. You, you don't want to be sticking these onto the wax, because um, obviously the wax will fail at some point.
All right, well, I don't know how to do this, so I'm just going to wing it and focus, so I'll stop talking. Like your light ring, you have to spin them a bit. Yeah, that looks good. I'll just lightly tap it, it'll stay there. All right, peel the bee. I'm sure the auto shops will take put this kind of care into it. Yeah, the good news is the adhesive, adhesive isn't as crazy as the slip low uh, skid plate glue. Okay, and now the final bit, the nine. I'm sure in the factory they had a plastic Teflon template. So here I'm trying to kind of eyeball that the top matches up, but I'm also watching this 26 on this angle that the same amount of uh, space is available here. And I'm just gonna lightly tap that. And I'm standing back. Yeah, I'm looking at that line on the diagonal. That looks pretty good. Let me pull up my template here. I'd say that's looking right. All right, so I'm going to press it home. Uh, committing fully at this point is to get them off will destroy the adhesive. So I'm giving them a good push. I guess another point would be is I'm working in a room temperature shop. Um, if you were doing this out where it was cold, the adhesive might not work very well. So, all right, and we'll peel away our template. Grab our microfiber. And my baby's whole again. There you go. Um, back to looking good. Everything's intact again. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Uh, having the template, um, it's really just a couple of minute deal uh, to lay out where you're going to uh, put them on. So um, anyways, that's a simple tip. Not a lot of you are probably going to be sticking on DB9 logos. Uh, but if you like articles like this, um, uh, there's probably going to be uh, another one right up here. Um, the companion blog article for this um, I'm going to have over on Aston1936.com and it'll have a copy of the template you can download and print out for yourself. Uh, if you like videos like this, please subscribe. And as always, I like hearing from you. Please leave them in comments down below. Thanks for watching.